Oh no, what did I do? <gasps> what did I do? Oh, I see. There we go. David Walsh popped his head in here earlier when I didn't have any kids and he was like, David, <laughs> because he's used to seeing you be the only one. I was like, later on, <laughs> a little early. situated come on come on okay with me you run so slow sometimes oh my god 
gosh, come on, come on, come on. Can I, can I quit Spotify? I have too many things going on. Why is this frozen? No. It's like not even letting me let them in. My computer is a total person. Hi. I'm trying to uh Hook this up, but we'll see. Uh, hook this up, but we'll see. It's not great. Okay, okay, it's working out. I got my oatmeal. You got your oatmeal? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> you want to see a cool trick I learned today? Oh. Look at yeah. this. Hang on. Uh, do it this way. Look at this. I'm like a human kaleidoscope. I can do the wave with myself. My head hurts. Wait, <laughs> too much. Oh, I love it. I couldn't stop doing it earlier in my uh, my English three class. They were like, "Okay, we've seen now." But then two people, the people I had in the classroom with me, came and we were all like doing stuff in front of it. I feel like it. I don't know. It's like '80s music video with. I could do it all day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna not though. Okay, who are we missing? Victoria, we have David here in person, Trine virtual, AJ virtual, Marilyn here, no Victoria, Kylo uh, virtual, okay. And so today we're going to look at our first synthesis prompt, not to write, just to look at, to kind of get an idea of what it needs to look like. I oh, was Victoria. I will uh, change her attendance. Um, so what we're going to do is look at a prompt that was on a former um, test. We're not gonna go in depth into every single source. Like we're not gonna read seven or however many sources they have uh, out loud because my goodness, that would take a long time. Um, but we're gonna kind of look at the, We're gonna look at the prompt, see what the question is, look at what the sources are and how you might want to use them. I'm sorry, I feel like an old woman, but I'm so cold. This is why I have this blanket here. Just freezing today. Um, and then we're going to look at some samples. And the good thing about the samples today is that they all have clear handwriting. So that's very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here with you guys. I have posted this stuff on Canvas. I'm going to look at it on PDFs just because they're, I already have them downloaded and don't want them to be downloaded a second time. But um, on your Canvas, if you're looking at your own, this first free response question, that's what we're going to look at first. Because that has the prompt and all of the sources. Well, that's not it, though. That's what we're looking at second. Maybe I didn't open it. What a dumb dumb. Okay. So like I said before, it's always gonna be the first question and everything is totally confirmed now that the AP exam will look like it usually looks, not like it looked last year. Last year, I feel like was such a, not a waste, but like, we prepped for so many things that just didn't ever wind up being used. They only had to write one essay. I don't even know what kind of essay it was. Um, and that was that was the only thing they had to do. But you guys get the whole shebang. So 
you'll have two hours and 15 minutes to write three essays. Um, you want to use this first 15 minutes to just read through your sources and get accustomed to those, including the prompt. So for this one, this was the question in 2017. Was I teaching in 2017? I think 2018. 2018, 2018 was the first year that I taught this class. So uh, this was not something that my students had to write. That's not important, I was trying to figure it out. Um, okay, so like it says, it suggested that you spend 15 minutes reading the question, analyzing and evaluating the sources and 40 minutes writing your response. So we're just gonna look at the question first off. Um, as the internet ages, what and how people read. Oh my gosh, I just read this completely wrong. What an idiot. As the internet age changes what and how people read, there's been considerable debate about the future of public libraries. While some commentators question whether libraries can stay relevant, others see new possibilities for libraries in the changing dynamics of today's society. Carefully read the following six sources. We're gonna look at them, we're not gonna carefully read them today including the introductory information for each source, then synthesize material from at least three of the sources and incorporate it into a coherent, well-written essay in which you develop a position on the role, if any, that public libraries should serve in the future. So that's what you're actually answering. What, what role, if any, should public libraries serve in the future? So I would recommend that you kind of decide where you stand on that or which stance you wanna take. And then as you're evaluating the sources, you can kind of figure out how does this help support what I'm saying? Could I use it as a counter argument? Um, some of them you might think is just not gonna work for you at all. And it will always be three sources. You have to, um, you have to incorporate three sources. Back in the day when the essays were graded out of nine points instead of six, you could not make higher than a four if you didn't quote three sources. So, um, I'd have to look back at the rubric, but you definitely will not be able to do very well if you don't quote three sources. So let's take a look at these. And this is pretty representative of the kind of sources that you'll get with each synthesis prompt, as far as like how many articles, how many infographics, sometimes there's a cartoon or something um, that can help you. But I'm not gonna read all of these like, extensively but just kind of blow through each one and see like which side it might support more so this one is an interview for american democracy project blog um an excerpt from an interview with the former president of the american library association the main professional organization for librarians in the united states it's uh you know it's just an article but just even looking at who it's an interview with, former president of the American Library Association, I bet there's something in here that would support you saying that libraries would still have a strong role. So knowing that you can kind of put, put source A into one pile and know that that's gonna tell you they're like, that it's gonna be useful in the future. Like I said, not going through these super extensively, but you might just kind of wanna like, read the, the opening paragraph and see like what you, what, how you think you might use it. Second source is a calendar of events, calendar of events for Orland Park Public Library. And if you look at this, there are definitely like reading challenges and things like that. But there's also like Pilates with Melanie Writer's Group for Adults, Toddler Art, uh, Farmer's Market, Stories at the Farmer's Market, things that are not necessarily just like going to the library and checking out books. So it takes no time to look at this calendar and kind of analyze it. And if I were the one writing this, I'd automatically think, oh, this library has a lot more going on than just checking out books. And even if print books are kind of on the decline, there's still a role for libraries because they're doing so many other things. Um, so I would definitely think about using that as a source. Source C is excerpted from an article on the website of PBS 
the largest public funded network in the, in the United States. And the title is What's the Role of Libraries in the Age of Ebooks and Digital Information? Since it's asking the question, it's sort of asking the question that you're answering, um, you would maybe need to look through it a little bit and see which side you think it falls on. Like, is there no role for libraries? Are they saying they're gonna kind of go extinct? Or are they giving support for what a library's use might be in the future? In which case, there's probably a lot of good stuff in here. Um, and even, you know, just like gazing over it, without libraries, the division would be even greater since for many people, they serve as the only access point for digital information and services. So again, that's kind of supporting that like libraries are gonna have a role in the future, even if it's not the role that they have right now. Scrolling on down, we have a graph here. It should be fairly easy to interpret. I love the graphs and the calendars and the infographics and stuff. It's just so easy. You don't have to like read through the whole article. Uh, the title is Libraries Transformed Research on the Changing Role of Libraries. Sounds like it's definitely going to be super relevant. You can get some information out here. Um, it's showing the percentage of Americans 18, age 16 and over who've read both books both ebooks and print books in the last 12 months. And like different situations that those people are in, re like reading books in bed, reading with a child, being able to get a book quickly and how much those things affect how many books people are reading. And got help from a librarian. So maybe you can use that. Yeah, uh, okay, we have two sources left to look at. Um, this one is excerpted from an article posted on the website of an online publisher of technology industry news. I might think just from that, that it's sort of saying that libraries are not going to have that much of a role in the future, just because I know it's so technological. And then if, if you look at here, the end of the library is the name of, uh, of the, is, is the title of this article. So, um, if you're saying that you think libraries are going to kind of go extinct, this would definitely be one that you want to look through more closely. And then lastly, um, a report by the American Library Association. I'm going to guess that they will probably be pro-library. So wild guess I'm making there. Um, the 2012 State of America's Libraries Report. Uh, and this has got a lot of this is not even really an article it's just like facts um so totally unbiased except for the fact that it is from the ala um so i would think probably if you're saying they're going to have a role that would be that would be what you want to do so that's what i'd recommend doing first and obviously that took a little bit more time because i'm doing it out loud when you're reading it to yourself it's pretty quick and easy to just go through and like see what the source is which way is it leaning and maybe decide on three that you think are really gonna help you and then read those three more closely because we don't have a lot of time to do that. We really, when you're trying to write something that incorporates three sources in a matter of like 40 minutes, you gotta kind of do everything you can to make the most use of your time. Although for the record, I will say two years ago when we did, um, when I taught AP, was it two years? Yeah. Um, we did like a mock test close to the actual test and like the kids stayed after school and we ran through it in the actual time frame. We did um, three hours and 15 minutes. And um, when we were doing the essays, the feedback I was getting was, I actually feel like I have more time than I thought I would. So that's kind of nice and maybe encouraging to hear that just like once you get going, as long as you know what you're, as long as you know what you're writing about, it really is a lot easier and quicker to get something down on paper. Okay, so now that we know what we're actually writing about, let's take a peek at some samples. And I actually on this one marked out the grade that they got. And I decided to stick with that because we're not grading out of uh, out of nine anymore. So that's kind of irrelevant. But from the times that we've looked at sample essays in the past, you can kind of tell that one is going to be 
pretty high ranking, one's gonna be around the middle and one's gonna be not very good. So as we're looking at these, kind of keep in mind, like what do, what do you think this person is doing that's making them score highly or is making them like taking away from this one? Anybody wanna read? I didn't think so. Y'all are my quietest class by far. In today's modern society, we can observe the fastest rate of growth in many areas, population, production, and especially technology. In the last two decades, cell phones went from a rare textbook sized item to an everyday product we can fit in our back pocket. One issue that arises with modern technology is the impact it has and will have on items and ideas of the past, such as public libraries. Amidst the debate about whether libraries can stay relevant in the upcoming years, I believe that this is a new opportunity for libraries to become even more prevalent in our lives and adapt to the changing times. Public libraries first found their place in the US with Ben Franklin's first library in the 1730s. And they found that information from source A, and that's exactly how you would quote it if you were, if you were writing it, um, just parenthetical source A, whether you quote it or paraphrase it when clearly this person paraphrased it. For around 300 years, they have persevered through changing society and still remain key to the academic world today. Many changes have taken place over the last three centuries and there will likely be more to come in the future. Our history has shown that it's perfectly feasible to hope that our libraries will be able to persevere for a long time. In fact, there's already evidence that libraries are rapidly adjusting to the change. They now offer classes on technology, such as Microsoft Excel and offer eBooks for digital readers from source B, which was the calendar. And that's exactly the point that I would have made. Public libraries are also known for their incredible resources and librarians. In the past, when working on a project, students would frequent the public library, trusting that there would be something there that could help them. Now people can instantly search for answers on the internet in shorter amounts of time. But what about those people who don't have access to the internet? A recent study showed that there are certain demographics who are less likely to use digital forms of reading, such as Hispanics and the unemployed. I got that info from source C. This can most likely be attributed to a lack of opportunities to access modern technology. This is where public libraries can step in. Already it's shown that 22% of library computer users only access to the computers is at the library. Source C. Some people believe that libraries only serve as storage for books, but they're wrong. Libraries serve as a center for academic discourse, a resource for many, and a storage for information in all its forms. There's a lot of potential for public libraries to serve as the bridge between the old and new world, separated by the new and rapid introduction of technology. Lastly, one of the most fundamental but overlooked hmm, resource of libraries, yes, is the librarians themselves. In a world where communication is a skill that's being increasingly valued, Librarians can serve as the connection between people and technology in a very recent survey. <laughs> Sorry, didn't see those period right there. In a very recent survey, it showed the percentage of people that receive help from a librarian is actually increasing through younger age groups. Source C. This shows that our reliance on librarians is actually going up, not down, contradictory to those who say the function of libraries is diminishing. Another study showed that those two thirds of library computer users asked the librarian for help. Librarians will serve as a community resource to help people adapt to the digital technology and information that may still be confusing for many. It's ridiculous to assume that people will be able to adapt to new technology on their own without assistance. And libraries can take on a new role in serving as a mentor to those who are still adapting. Libraries can definitely stay relevant in a contemporary and changing society. In fact, they will be able to play a key role as a bridge between those who are still adapting and those that have adapted. The changing world is an opportunity for public libraries to take on additional take on additional roles in the community. Okay, so this was the most this was the highest scoring of the three we're going to look at. Why do you think this scored highly? What did this person do that was good and effective? They they worded it perfectly, I must say. Yeah, it's really well written. I mean, that's a that's a vague thing to say that it's well written, but you're you're right. Like it's 
it's worded really well. The first thing I noticed, I actually almost stopped after I read the introduction and talked about it. Um, this is such a, this introduction is such a good example of hook narrow down thesis, that, uh, that kind of upside down, upside down triangle that we have talked about when we're, when we're talking about introductions. It's not like the strongest, most interesting hook I've ever heard in my life or anything, but you know, it's, it's more broad. It's talking about areas of growth in all kinds of avenues. And then we narrow down in the last two decades, cell phones went from a huge thing to fit in our pocket, um, continuing to narrow down. And then their thesis here at the end, while they do say, I believe that, and that's not necessary, um, amidst the debate about whether libraries can stay relevant in the upcoming years, there's new opportunities for libraries to become even more prevalent in our lives and adapt to the changing times. One thing I want to point out about this thesis is that it does not follow that three part formula that we've talked about in here. Um, her, I say this is she, her paragraphs are really organized. She talked about one particular topic per paragraph, but she didn't necessarily introduce that in the thesis. That's okay. You do not have to stick to that three part thesis. It's just kind of a, pretty much foolproof structure to making sure that you have a strong thesis. But this person, she's taking a very clear stance. She's just not spelling it out for us as much. Um, there are opportunity, there's new opportunity for libraries to become even more pre prevalent in our lives and adapt to the changing times. And then in her paragraphs, she goes on to tell us how. Um, if you look in this first paragraph, first body paragraph, she's talking a lot about um, like the ways that libraries have changed and how, like that uh, calendar said, there's so many more things that they're doing now. Um, incredible resources in the second paragraph and how the resources of like people who don't have the internet at home. So that's obviously a huge argument is like, if you have the internet at home, you don't really need a library. Um, but this is sort of refuting that. Um, and then the third paragraph is specifically about librarians, which are a huge resource and really helpful. And then the conclusion is pretty good too. Libraries can definitely stay relevant in contemporary and changing society. Um, the, I think there could be like a stronger transition there, but She's recapping everything she already said, but she's not directly restating it. She's talking about like a bigger implication. The changing world is an opportunity for public libraries to take an additional role in the community. So that's very good. Let's go down and see what the A people, AP people, A people said about that one. I think this one got an eight for the record. I don't know why I remember that, but I think it did. This essay effectively develops an appropriate and convincing position, uh, uses four sources. You only have to use three, but this person effectively used four, argue, uh, effectively synthesizes them into the argument, um, uses source A and source B really convincingly in the first paragraph. Third and fourth paragraphs is effectively synthesized material from sources C and D. Um, while not flawless, the essay's prose consistently demonstrates control of a wide range of elements of effective writing. And that's what AJ and I are kind of saying in the beginning, like she's just, she's worded everything really well. Um, it's very sophisticated writing. It's not the most amazing thing I've ever read in my life, but it's really solid. All right, let's move on. To the second one, which we know is going to be somewhere in the middle, um, probably like a somewhere in the four to six range. If we were grading this out of nine, anybody want to read? Okay, starting out with a personal anecdote hook here. 
Throughout my elementary and middle school years, I spent almost every day in the school library. It was my place to do school research, interact with my librarian, and to seek out the biggest book I could find. While I may not take a trip to the book section of my school library very often, I of course still have my own card to the local library in my town. There are endless possibilities for what the future of libraries hold. I already think it could be a better narrowing down. For as long as public libraries are around, they will continue for communities to exchange information and encourage discussion to allow for people of all ages to remain educated through events that take place and to educate others on the use of digital media through libraries. Okay, so this person has like, I'm, I'm talking about this one more as we go than I did the other one, but it's fine. Um, that's a long thesis, first of all. But it's not the worst thesis. It is more structured than that first one. Um, it's taking a, a definite stance. They will continue, libraries will, com, will continue for communities to exchange information and encourage discussion to allow for people of all ages to remain educated through events that take place and to educate others on the use of digital media through libraries. So I'm expecting that to be the three things that this person talks about. And actually, this person's handwriting is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Libraries contain all the information that we need to know. Look at that K. That's so weird. It's like, it's a U. I don't understand how that's even possibly a K, but whatever. Libraries contain all the information that we need to know. From books about our favorite animals to books written by our most valuable politicians and educators. A fragment. It is important for people to stay informed about the current events and to discuss these important matters. Nancy Cranick, the former president of the American Library Association, once said that an informed public constitutes the very foundation of a democracy. Source A. In a democracy, we are allowed the freedom of expression and are encouraged to participate in our democratic process. In a library, you can find all the records and resources you need to do this. In a library, you can share mutual interest and build bonds through just a discussion of a great book. It's important to have this backbone to rely on in your community, to go sit down in a library and solve, it, solve and understand the issues that you may be facing. Gonna say, first of all, I'm seeing some fragments here and genuinely sentence fragments are like, one of the things that I see most that needs to be fixed uh, when you guys get to this class. And I think the reason for that is primarily because we talk in fragments all the time. And it's not a big deal to do that. It's not a big deal to write fragments if you're texting somebody or like on social media or whatever, but in an academic essay, you wanna make sure that you're not doing that. Um, I was also gonna say that this one, this paragraph is just a little vague. Um, according to her thesis, I feel like she should be talking about exchanging information and encouraging discussion. And she kind of is, but she's more just saying like, libraries have all this stuff. And that's the point. Toddlers and young children don't carry around ebooks or iPhones, actually. They don't sit in their bed and read from their laptop while drinking a cup of coffee. They need story time with pictures of their favorite princesses or cars. They need interaction. In Source B, we are shown many events that are taking place in the public library, many like terrific tales for toddlers or books before kindergarten. Children are allowed to go with their families to the library to enjoy terrific time with other children. They get to interact with other people and conceive the pages and pictures face to face, but there aren't the uh, but they these aren't the only things that take place. Events like music makers and environmental club helps our numbers of the community to stay educated and share the information they've learned with others. Again, sort of vague, just like not super focused. I get the point of that one. She's you know using source B which I think is probably the best source for this. Um, but it's just sort of, I don't know, loose. 
the connections are loose. Even in 2017, many people don't have access to the internet. Shocking, right? It's unfair to people who don't make more than $30,000 a year or are unemployed to have possibly their only source of internet be taken away. According to Source C, these people, along with Hispanics and those without a diploma, are less likely to use an ebook. Okay. I feel like right there, we need to be like, well, what's the implication of that? Why are you sharing that? Also, as Michael, someone said, 22% of something computer users, the library was their only source for access to computers and the internet. Okay. Not everyone is as fortunate to access technology in their own home. And it's unfair to take away a source of education and their love of books. Libraries will always be valuable to our society and without them, we would be at a great loss. They are changing every day while our society changes and they will forever be the cornerstone of democracy in our communities. Okay, so I said a few things along the way. Did you guys notice anything that you thought either worked or that she could have done better? No ideas. I thought this is a pretty weak conclusion. And it's very vague, which seems to be one of her kind of major things. Let's see what the AP people think. Adequately developed her position, sufficiently synthesizes three sources to do so. The essay opens with a personal anecdote, which appropriately leads to a clearly stated thesis that ends the first paragraph. All right, so introduction, not terrible. Despite some repetitive language, the second paragraph makes adequate use of source A to argue for blah, blah, blah. third paragraph further develops that idea. So like some loose connections there. Uh, fourth paragraph appropriately uses source C. Overall, the essay develops and sustains an argument that's somewhat repetitious but ultimately sufficient and adequate. The student shows an understanding of the sources and the prose is generally clear despite some lapses. It sounds like it's not that bad, but I know that when I was in AP classes in high school, if the comments I'd been given were like, that was sufficient, that was adequate, I'd have felt terrible. <laughs> like, I, you want it to be really good. I mean, that's why you're in AP because you're capable of it. Um, and I think this person is just somebody that needs to push a little bit further. I don't remember if it was in this class that I was explaining or not. I think it was where like, even if you feel like it makes sense what you said, err on the side of explaining too much because whoever's reading your essay can't necessarily read your mind and they might be able to connect some dots, but that's not really their job. It's your job to go ahead and connect the dots for them they should get everything they need to understand out of the essay without having to explain a ton without, I mean, you don't get to come with your essay. You don't get to say, well, what I meant there was, you just need to be clear about it in the essay. All right, we've got time for the last one, which looks like the handwriting's not too bad. And could be male or female handwriting. Sometimes I can tell, but okay. So this one is gonna be on the lower end. So think as we're reading, think about why this is not really working. In the recent debate about the future of public libraries, some argue whether they will stay relevant or not. Although it's sad, but true, eBooks are taking over through examples of statistics, graphs, budget cuts, and the use of libraries in today's society. Libraries cannot stay relevant with the increasing demand of eBooks and online activity. It's stated that libraries are finding creative ways to meet demands, source C, but how so? When citizens of the community ages 16 to 65 were asked when attending a library received help from a librarian, each category of ages was less than 50%, source D. With budget cuts, libraries are struggling to find new ways to keep up with today's society. Where did they start that quote? Oh, no, no, okay, I'm, I'm an idiot. 23 states 
reported cuts in state funding. For three years in a row, more than 40% of states reported decreased funding. Source F. I'm going to come back to that. Including the suspended bu suspending budget cuts and being able to access more information online than all libraries combined. Source E. So we've used the resources at this point. The use of libraries is decreasing. In today's society, the attendance at libraries is decreasing. Siegler, author of The End of the Library, recalls, it's hard for me to even remember the last time I was in a library. Because of the efficiency of eBooks, there's no use for a library. Not only are people not attending libraries, there are not many using print books either. In a survey of people 16 and over, in two thirds of the categories preferred eBooks over print books. This use of eBooks over print books results in the decreasing of libraries, which adds to their uselessness in the future. I align my views with Siegler that the point is times have changed. Due to the numerous examples of statistics, budget cuts, and low attendance of libraries, it's observed that the use of libraries is, is decreasing, therefore non-existent in the future. Somebody talk to me about what doesn't work in this essay, or that could do better. Maybe what you would do differently. I think like, like I would have worded it better. The like the wording. Okay. Do you have an example? Yes, that, that's a great point. Uh, what Marilyn said, in case you guys couldn't hear, is that she wouldn't have made as many assumptions. Like, for instance, in the end, that if the use of libraries is decreasing, it'll definitely be non-existent in the future. That's a pretty big leap to make. I would imagine that libraries probably go through kind of hills and valleys of how much people are using them. I would think probably like during COVID, for instance, people probably weren't using them all that much because they weren't supposed to be going out of their houses. Um, I would think probably at the beginning of new school years, they get used a lot because people have like momentum and they wanna they want to study a lot more at the beginning of a school year or also like during exam times and stuff, um, particularly like college libraries. This is more about public libraries, but college libraries would be good for that. Um, you said, AJ, that you would try to phrase it a little bit better. And I agree with that. I thought it was pretty repetitive. They said a lot of the same stuff over and over. Um, David, what were you gonna say? I say that, like libraries are useless, but, but they're really not because like people who don't have like access to internets, they go to libraries to look for jobs. Yeah, exactly. yeah, you're so right. And that's the point that the first two people made, but this person seemed to have ignored. And it's not bad that they think this as long as they can back it up, as long as they can back up the fact that they think that libraries don't really have a role in the future, that's fine. But the other people kind of said the same thing that like it's it's available internet for free for people who don't have that at home and that's one way that the role has changed but stayed really important and they use the information from the sources to support what they said which is ultimately why their why their arguments were a little bit stronger sorry david what were you gonna say um, that's a good point too, yeah, that there was essentially like no counter argument. They didn't really um, show the other side of the argument. Uh, and they talked sort of about, like they used the sources, but the things that they said were like 22% of people did this and 23% of people did this, but there's this whole other side that's right there in the statistics that can be argued for why libraries are still relevant. And they just didn't acknowledge that at all. Also, this is a thing that you guys really have to watch out for when you're doing synthesis essays and like research essays, any kind of thing where you're incorporating other sources is just relying too heavily on quoting things. And that was kind of the same thing when we did rhetorical analysis, you had quote stuff. Um, but what you don't wanna do 
is build your whole argument out of pieces of other people's argument. You want to build your own argument and then have the information that's available to you support what you're saying. Uh, and that first person, the first essay we looked at, did a really good job of that. This looks like this person went through and found a bunch of quotes that they thought would work and then just kind of put some words around it so that it flowed like an essay should. But I feel like for the most part, this isn't even really this person's argument. This is just stating what they found in the sources. And that's not a, that's not an argumentative essay. That's more of like a, some sort of review, like a literature review or something, uh, which is not what we're doing. Um, also, just wanted to point out, where is this? Oh, there's two things I wanted to point out and then we're probably gonna be out of time. Um, it was the first time they used a quote, I think. No. Oh, right here. Um, with budget cuts, libraries are struggling to find new ways to keep up with today's society. 23 states reported cuts in states funding. For three years in a row, more than 40% of states reported decreased funding. And they kind of move on, and in fact, move on to another quote. But it's, it definitely takes practice sometimes, but this quote is just kind of plumped down in the middle of stuff. And there's not really an introduction to tell us why they're using that. And there's no explanation afterwards. Um, we use sometimes what we call signal phrases, which is like, it stated that, blah, blah, blah. That's not a great one. Um, a great one would be, I think it was in a previous essay where they were like, Nancy Cranick, former president of the American Library Association stated that such and such. So we know why this quote's relevant. We know why it's a good source of evidence for what you're writing. This one's just kind of like plumped down in the middle and we don't really know the relevance. The other thing I was gonna say, This is so gross. <laughs> I align my views with Siegler. It's not like, uh, I know that we have, we have trouble sometimes with saying stuff like, I believe that, blah, blah, blah. We don't need to do that. Um, we wanna avoid phrases like, I believe, or it's my opinion that, but I don't know why, this one just rubs me the wrong way so much. I align my views with her. Just say that she, her, her quote is valid or something. Don't say that you align your views with it. We don't know what your views are in the first place. We don't know who you are. So it's just like, ugh, it doesn't sound good. It's not well-written and it's not objective. It's not academic. She doesn't have the scholarly tone that we're striving for. So let me stop sharing my screen here so that I can be a, it's not as good if I'm not the only one on the screen. Um, Tomorrow, we're gonna do a little bit of an activity. It's not an essay, but it is a writing assignment. Hi. Um, incorporating this idea. It's not, it's not like you're gonna have to read seven articles or anything. It's, it's very quick reading and it's kind of interesting and silly, but it gets you used to incorporating these sources and backing up what you're saying by using the evidence that you have if that makes sense. It'll definitely make more sense when you see it tomorrow. Um, but we have only got like six more minutes. So probably a good time to wrap things up before you leave. Let's just see that one more time. <laughs> fun, it's so fun for me. All right, you guys, I'll see you tomorrow.